In this video, we will take a look at static port address translation or port forwarding with multiple inside servers. In almost every network, you will find two or more servers with duplicate port numbers. The most common example of that would be two web servers operating on port 80 or 443 residing inside a network behind a NAT boundary router. Now, duplicate ports aren't an issue inside a network because the IP address is the differentiator of the packet at layer 3. But if you need those two servers to be accessible over the internet via a static pad or port forwarding or a single public IP address, which is a common case, then things get interesting. The NAT device, which in our case is a router, cannot understand two NAT entries with the same public IP address and with the same external port numbers mapped to two different internal servers because there is no differentiating criteria between them, in this case, on the external side. Hence, we are left with two options. Option 1. We could change the internal port numbers of the servers, but that would cause all sorts of havoc on the system team as they may have internal applications binded with that port number. Now apart from that, there's always kind of a clash between the system team and the network team so getting them to change the port is not going to be easy at all. Trust me on that. So we have another option which is option 2. We can change the external port number on the NAT router to facilitate both the servers on a single public IP address. This is one of the most commonly used static pad or port forwarding when you have multiple internal servers with overlapping ports. We will configure and explore both options in our upcoming lab. Hello and welcome to the first lab of the Cisco Router NAT Advanced Series. Today we will be performing static PAT with multiple server scenario. This lab is going to be performed on EVNG community and will be available for you to download in the material section. Now just to give you a lab overview, we have two Telnet servers residing behind a NAT router, which are listening on port 23. Now basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to emulate servers on the back end of a NAT router. Now we used Telnet servers because they are the most easy to configure in EVNG community and it's really easy for you to set up yourself. Instead if I had made this lab with real servers that would have been really hard for you to understand. The baseline is that we should get the concept right. So we have these two servers that are listening on port 23 which is the default Telnet port. They have IP addresses configured of 10.1.1.100 and 200 respectively. And then we have a switch in the middle which has all of its ports in VLAN 10 and they're all access ports. And the subnet that we're going to be using behind our NAT router is going to be 10.1.1.0/24. Now up on the border of our organization we have our NAT router which has two interfaces, one on the inside and one on the outside. Outside it is connected to an internet or internet service provider as usual as you've seen in the basic NAT series, sorry the beginner's NAT series. But this time what is happening is that we have a router that has this icon changed to a cloud. So it basically has two interfaces. In Pactracer uh, in the previous series we had a router and then we had a cloud icon uh, hovering over it. So that's not the case here. And then we have our internet client. Now as I always say that this is not the way that it's going to happen in the real life. Uh, it's not going to have a direct public IP address. It could actually, it could. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be wrong but it could be the case uh, because I have seen some cases like this. But in reality 99% of the time it's going to be behind a NAT router. But we don't want to make things complex for us. We want it to be simple so that we can understand the concept and then we can apply it to the real world. Now let's look at the lab information here that we have that everything except the NAT configuration on the NAT router has been configured alright. 
Both the Telnet servers on the inside domain are listening on port uh, TCP port 23. So they're basically listening on this default Telnet port. Then we have these lab steps that we have to configure net inside and outside interfaces on the NAT router. Configure static pad such that both Telnet servers are accessible from the client on the internet, which is this client. And we have two methods to do that. Now one is not that much um, done in the industry because of its complexity. The other one is the one that is being done in the industry very often. So the first thing is, uh, first method is change the end server port numbers. Now, if you were a system administrator, you will go like, what on earth are you seeing? You cannot do that. And they're right, actually. The system administrator that we have actually are right in that sense because if we have a, a web server and it's talking to, to like these database servers and everything, I don't know what they have, but they are all connected, interconnected, and changing this port. Um, I mean, this is a telnet port, obviously, so it doesn't have so much reliability on other things. Um, but the thing is that in real life, they are on port 443, which is uh, HTTPS, and they have backend servers communicating back and forth. Internal servers are communicating with it. So it's kind of pain for them if you go, if you ask the system team to change the port numbers. So, but this method, I have personally implemented this method some of the time. There are conditions that you have to do this. So if you have the privilege of doing this, um, will be configuring okay let's change the port number of uh, this server over here to 3023 so first of all I'm, I'm gonna be showing you uh, these the configurations that we have on the back end I'm not, I'm not I'm not gonna just go through and say okay everything is configured uh, first let me show you the telnet server one um, actually I already have a telnet server to uh, telnet connection to all of them so <clears throat> telnet server one Let's see what it is. Now on the back end, a telnet server is just a router. We have a normal router and we have only changed the icon. This is a changed icon actually if I were to, I can't really edit right now because it's on. If it was off, I would have shown you. So it's pretty easy. Let me just add a node really quick. Uh, if I do an add router, I could change the icon to whatever icon I have. And I'll leave these icons if you want in uh, in the material section so you can use these icons as well. So, all right. So let me just show you. Okay, show run. We're going to be using <coughs> show run really less, lesser than the previous series because we didn't have a lot of options there like the regular expression options, which I'm going to be showing you. So show IP interface brief, exclude unassigned. So I'm going to be excluding the unassigned interfaces. Uh, so <clears throat> the telnet servers have 10 100 IP address given and show IP routes because this is a router. So just like any server, it has a default route pointing towards its, its routed device that could be a router or anything else. Uh, obviously, it's a router. Anything doing routing is a router. Um, okay, so what else do we have? Okay, so you've got that uh, show run section line and... What do we have on the line we device for telnet sessions? So what I've really done is I've just configured 15 lines and I'm just saying that login local, use the local database for authentication. And whenever the user uh, authenticates by the lo local database, the privilege level should be 15. So they're on in the privilege mode once they clear the telnet uh, authentication. Uh, the transport level input all this is the command that is necessary in Eve NG once you have these routers set up They're set to none. So that means that no SSH or telnet session is going to be uh, Able to communicate with the, these routers or, or switches every device almost has this uh, to set to none uh, Okay uh, That's pretty much it and then we have usernames which, which is the most important part which I'm going to be showing you now uh, we have these username configured on in our local database and we have a menu configured and We have only configured the menu for your easiness and that is because I want you to be uh, Not to memorize all these commands and stuff and and to make a little bit neater output or neater uh, lab I've made this menu now uh, 
these are the basic commands of the menu and uh, let me just show you what happens so show IP interface brief <clears throat> if I do tell it to my own self it's gonna be prompting me for our username and password which is admin and Cisco giving that you this is the menu and this is the banner that I actually wanted that this is telnet server one instead of me going back and forth and seeing which is telnet most uh, which is server one and which is two and we also have check your connection status so if we oh sorry I just hit two um, again admin Cisco and uh, if I hit one it'll be checking the connection status it's kind of like a TCP or a netstat command which you have in Windows uh, this is a command actually uh, show TCP brief to be precise that basically shows you the connection that is that this server or, or this router is making to anybody or if anybody is connection uh, anybody is making connections to it so it's gonna show you all that so this is basically what we have configured on telnet server 1 same exactly same settings have been configured for telling uh, server two so I'm not gonna be showing you that uh, but we are gonna be changing the port number here and then we have a switch nothing really uh, exciting here show interface status just to give you oh, man I just don't get it uh, let me just configure these ports because every port should be in VLAN 10 and it should be an access port so let me just configure this uh, interface range I'm gonna be using the range command gig 0 slash uh, 0 uh, <laughs> what am I saying 0 slash 0 2 1 um, because 2 is already configured so I'm gonna be saying switch port host this command basically makes this and uh, these ports access ports alongside spanning tree uh, port fast so that you don't have to wait uh, for that 30 second interval the so switch port access VLAN 10 so show interface status and bingo oh, there it is so let's write that now we have our NAT router here uh, sorry I had to go actually pause the video and check if anything was um, related to NAT configure or not because I was testing some stuff the show IP, IP interface brief exclude unassigned uh, we have only have two IP addresses configured on this router one facing the internet uh, the ISP side over here as you can see if I hover over it, this is the gig 0 slash 1 200.1.1.1 and the other is 10.1.1.254 so we got these two IP addresses configured on the NAT router and anything related to NAT is not configured as of yet then we have our internet uh, let me show you that show IP interface show IP interface brief exclude a sign so it has what, one IP of 200.1.1.2 and 99.1.1.2 that is directly connected to this internet show IP interface brief exclude internet client uh, that has an IP of 99.1 sorry top 1.1.1 so there it is you have these um, devices at your disposal now we're going to be going into a uh, telnet server 2 and we're going to be changing the port to 3023 now you might not have really seen this port number being changed so let's do it today uh, let's go into telnet server 1 and you only have to go into the line of vdy 0 to 15 all the lines whatever the line, whatever the line may be and hit a command called rotary now rotary command has a default 30 port number with it so anything you type in over here so if i type in 23 it's now going to start to listen to port 3023 now let me show you that um let me do a telnet oh, first of all let me show you the ip address show ip interface brief oh great interface brief exclude on a sign uh, do a telnet to 10.1.1.200 and 3023 that is the port and bingo oh, it's working right so it also has a menu and I think I've hit that wrong oh man not again admin Cisco all right so this is server number two as you can see so I'm telling my own self so hitting one and check that out um, this is basically saying that this is the local address of uh, myself actually 
and the destination port number that is being used to connect to me uh, via telnet is 3023. Now this is showing two sessions because I'm, I'm initiating t a telnet session from my, uh, my own self and I am connecting to my own self. That is because I, uh, that is why I have two sessions. So I'm doing a logout now. And so we have successfully configured the port 3023. Uh, let's go back to our lab and now we need to configure the port address a static port address translation but before that we have to configure the inside and outside interfaces of the NAT router so by now this would have been a really piece of cake for you guys right so um, let's start configuring the NAT router first of all we're going to be configuring the NAT inside interface which is this one geek 0 ss 0 and going global configuration mode interface gig zero slash zero ip nat inside and it's going to take a little bit time and because it's kind of like a cpu and memory intense for uh, devices residing on uh, eve i think so it takes a little bit more time and only you know, trace backs and stuff so interface uh, and, the, and the response is a little bit slow um, I think it's back interface gig gig zero slash one IP NAT outside. So you show IP NAT statistics. I think we've done this command a couple of times before in the previous series. So we got these two interfaces. So great. We got these two interfaces configured for NAT. Now, what we need to do is we need to configure static paths such that both telnet server are accessible from the client on the internet. So, as we see, telnet server 2 is uh, listening on port 3023. And telnet server number 1 is, is listening on port 23, which is the default port. So first, let us configure the default one so that you can have an understanding. So IPNAT inside source static, and we have gone through this in the beginner series. And if you want a refresher, you can always refer to that series. It's free. Uh, IPNAT inside source static, and whenever we hit TCP or UDB, we're going into the port address translation of static NAT. So inside local, uh, that'll be easy for you guys right now. Uh, 10.1.1.100, this guy is going to be the inside local. So 10.1.1.100, and what's going to be the port number it's going to be listening on? It's port 23, simple as that. And this is also called internal port, okay? Uh, more on that later. And uh, the port number, okay, uh, this is uh, the IP address, 200.1.1.1. And this is the inside global address. If we hit a question mark, it's going to say 200.1.1.1 is the inside global address on our uh, side. So what is going to be the external port? Now, by external port, hit a question mark, what it does mean is that whenever this client, this internet client, is going to hit this NAT router on 200.1.1.1, what will be its destination port that's going to be hitting you on? And that's going to be port 23 in this case. Beautiful. Now, the next one is the NAT statement for TCP port 3023. It's kind of like the same, but we're going to change both the port 3023. Now, as we're on this NAT statement right now, let me just show you why it is necessary to change the ports. Now, if I hit 23 right here, right now, what is going to happen? It's going to generate an error saying that a similar static NAT entry already exists. Now, it makes a lot of sense because if an internet client is coming and hitting you on 200.1.1.1 on port 23, it has to be translated, right? It cannot be translated if you have two uh, same external ports configured on your router. It won't make sense to it. Will it make sense? No, I, I think it does. So, so we need to change the port numbers. 
one way or, an, or another. So this is the method one that we're doing and we're changing the internal server's port number, which is obviously not that much recommended at all because it's gonna be hard for them. So, and another thing, uh, show run. Oh, sorry, I haven't really configured it, okay. Uh, for 3023, now in this situation, the external port, which is this port, and the internal port, oh, sorry, it's, it's gonna be 200. <laughs> I was gonna make a mistake is going to be um yeah uh, that i was saying the external port 3023 tcb 3023 and 3023 internal port are going to be the same because they are same on both ends on the external side and on the internal side the method two is a little bit different because the external port is going to be different from the internal one heading enter here so we've got this configured now let's do a use show run just to verify that ip nat now you're gonna see an extendable keyword written besides those NAT statements. And why is that? That is because the extendable keyword allows the user to configure several ambiguous static translations, where ambiguous translations are translations with the same local or global address. Now in our case, we can see the global address is the same, so it has to use this extendable keyword. In the previous iOSs, uh, this keyword was not auto-generated on the NAT statements where you had ambiguous uh, addresses. Uh, you had to statically define that, but in the newer iOS versions or iOS XE versions, they are uh, implied automatically. Now let's do a test from the internet client. First of all, let me do just a basic ping to 200.1.1.1. That is um, from this internet client, which is sitting here to this this router over here and it's working the ping works fine now let me do a telnet to 200.1.1.1 and by default the port is 23 if you want to change the port you can change the port with the port number um, after this IP address command like this okay the default is 23 if you don't type in it's gonna use the default 23 number port and admin cisco so the 23 server is server one so we're going to be redirected to telnet server one right so hitting enter and there it is beautiful output over here so this is telnet server number one so let's do a one uh check your connection status and you can see now we're sitting on the telnet server one from its perspective the foreign address is 99.1.101 and that is the source port that it generated. And this is the local address. This is its local address with its perspective. And as this guy, this foreign guy made the connection on port 23, so connection is established. Now let's do a logout from here and do a, uh, do a test again on 3023. And we are going somewhere, let's see. And there it is, beautiful. This is Telnet uh, Server 2. Checking the status. Oh, sorry, I just hit 2. I don't know why I do hit 2 again again. Admin Cisco. Uh, maybe because the 2, Server 2. That is because I'm, I'm hitting 2 again again. Okay, 1 is time wait. That is because I basically terminated that session, so it waits a little bit. And this is the session that has been created from that client over here. Uh, that is double line one 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 and that, that's a great port source, source port number huh? unique and Check that out The connection has been made on port number three zero two three Which is the port number that it's listening on this still server number two is listening on right now Now to check their NAT router that we have here uh, Let's check the statements show IP NAT translations and we can see one translation is gone because we actually terminated the session. And this is the one that is being initiated as of right now. As you can see, it basically hit on 200.1.1.1 on 3023, and it was a TCP port, and it got translated to 10.1.1.1.200 with the same, obviously, same destination port number. And this was the source IP address. Now, now, I told you before in the previous series that if you want to know 
who basically initiated the connection. If you want to see that from the NAT translations, you have to see the port numbers. If a long port number like this is coming from an outside local or outside global address, that basically means it was the one that was um, initiating this NAT session or sorry, this connection towards this server. So that is the meaning of this NAT translation. And what else can we see right now? Hmm. Well, we could see a debug right now. So I'll just clear the NAT translation, clear IP NAT translations. Don't do that in production. Your All of your devices will like halt. And if anyone doing a remote desktop or has a browser, well, browsers won't be that much of a deal, but anyone doing your remote desktop will be in trouble. Um, it's okay. Uh, so, so what do we need to do next? So what do we need to do next is run debug, show IP, uh, debug, IP NAT. Translations was the command, but okay, that's it. Now let's do, oh, beautiful. Basically it's TCP, so it tried to reinitiate the connection again and check this out on the NAT router. So we had this source IP address coming in and was hitting on destination 200.1.1.1. Check that out. This was basically the IP packet coming in and the destination was changed from 200.1.1.1 to 10.1.1.1.200. Uh, now it doesn't specify the port numbers. Um, I'm not too, too sure actually what debug command does that. Uh, debug IP NAT. I think even if I do detailed, sorry, even if I do detailed, maybe then I can get it. Do should check, okay. Um, yeah, I think I got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. Actually, this is kind of cool. I didn't know about this command uh, because I haven't actually used it. Don't, don't do this in production, man, because this is going to bog your router up and nothing's going to work. So, especially your telling session. So we have this TCP session, and let me just try to read this. Um, this was, this was, wherever it was, uh, TCP 10.1.1.200. This was the destination port, and this was the source, and you can see the source port number with it, and you can see the translations that were happening. This was the reverse translation. Uh, when the app IP packet is going towards backwards towards the double nine dot one 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 server, and um, this is pretty neat. This is showing you the translations back and forth, and this is quite uh, useful. Uh, sorry, on the bug all. But what do we need to do now? Is we need to implement method two, as you have understood this method, and this method won't be that hard to understand. So now that we have that understanding, let's implement method number two. And it basically states that change the external port number. So that means I'm going to be reverting back this Telnet uh, server uh, port number from 23, uh, from 3023 to back to 23. So let's do that real quick and go to Telnet server two and go to line VDY 0 to 15, no rotary, and that's pretty much it. So it's now listening on port 23. Actually, it was uh, already listening on port 23 uh, as well as that 3023, but now it's only listening on port 23. Now, um, what, what, what I'm going to be doing in this lab, I'm going to be changing. Uh, let me just show you this. I have these two translations already made and what I'm gonna be doing I actually just made something oh man I, I just give me a sec I gotta revert these okay so we're back now what's gonna happen is these two telnet servers are not gonna be changing their default ports of 23 and what's gonna happen is we're gonna change the external ports now, any port number that is on the inside domain of the NAT router is termed as internal port, and anything outside of the NAT router is categorized as external port. So, the external port is going to remain the same of 3023, and 
the internal port is going to be 23 for both of them. This is how the industry really works because you may have multiple web servers or some database servers. I don't know what kind of servers you might have, but they may and they will have the same port numbers, but the router cannot understand that. It could if you have like multiple IP addresses, you could do that, but that would be a waste of IP addresses. So you used port address translation for that. So let's implement that real quick. So we already have a line, oh sorry, a router NAT configuration uh, configured. Let's check that out. IP NAT NAT. And we're going to just amend that NAT statement and you're going to see uh, a difference right away. This was the NAT statement for um, telnet server number two. And let's do a no to that. It's saying that uh, translations are happening. Do you want to delete those translations? And yes. Uh, okay. Oh, whoa, what is happening? Okay. Uh, oh, right. There it is. <clears throat> IP NAT inside source static TCP 10.1.1.200. Now the internal port. Uh, I got to digress that. Uh, internal port is 23. If you can see this clearly, I should have used terminal a bit. I'm sorry, guys. Um, the internal port, as you can see here, is 23 now, but the external port is the same. So let's head enter on that and let's see what the internet client sees. So first of all, we're going to be doing a telnet session to our uh, on port 23, and it's going to land on. Uh, Talent one, server one, right? So let's check the inter internet connection right now. I mean, the the connection right now. So it's coming from, it's coming, it's landing on port twenty three now. Check this out. Check this out. This is gonna be cool. Uh, now I'm doing a telnet on two hundred dot one 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 on port three zero two three uh, two three as I was before, but now the external port is different from the internal port. Doing enter, admin, Cisco. Check this out. Oh God, I gotta stop doing this too thing. I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry, I'm really, really sorry. Cisco, and one. And there it is, look at that beauty. Look at that beauty, it's connected, and it's established actually, on port 23, not on 3023. Now let me just show you the NAT router and the translations it's happening. Show IP NAT translations. And as you can see over here, this, uh, which one was it? The port number was 4405. That is the entry. This is the entry that is being netted right now. So the packet came in on 200.1.1.1.3023. Uh, so it hit the NAT router with that IP address, that global IP address, with that port number 3023. It converted that to uh, basically netted that to 10.1.1.1.200 onto port 23, which is the internal port of that telnet server. So that is how you can facilitate two servers with same port numbers sitting behind a NAT router.